Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to the latest Coffee Break with Cat Surveys. My guest today is Anne Allen, a Charter Surveyor and the Chief Executive Officer of the Chartered Institution of Civil Engineering Surveyors. And is committed to lead CICS's digital transformation and dedicated to collaborate with other member group organizations. And she's a big advocate of education, sustainability, inclusivity, and diversity. And thank you so much for uh, joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you. I'm excited to talk to you as I know you and the CICS have been really busy recently. Thank you, and great to be invited here today. Yeah, it has been a busy few months because we've been doing a lot around our new strategy. But what's been fantastic is we've been able to engage with members through that. So through workshops, surveys, what have you, over about 600 members have been engaged in helping us shape our survey. So it's been great. Really loved it. Uh, really good. And I consider myself lucky because I've been part of some of those strategic sessions really enjoyed, really well put uh, together, and re I'm really hoping that solely deliver some of the results you were expecting to get out of those strategic workshops. Uh, now, and starting a new job is always challenging, let alone in the middle of a global uh, pandemic. Uh, so you are a, a year in the post at the CRCS. How do you reflect uh, on your first year? Have you achieved everything you wanted to achieve? So I suppose when I step back and reflect, it's certainly been a different way to start at an organisation, but it's been a mixture of challenges and real opportunities. So I haven't met people face to face. I haven't met council of management. I haven't met people like yourself. I'd normally have gone out and met a lot of industry and met a lot of members. So I haven't been able to do that. However, on the other hand, because we've run so many virtual meetings and events, etc., I've been able to meet more members than I could ever have expected to, and in particular, globally. So last year's AGM was the first time we ran a virtual AGM, and we had people from Hong Kong join us. Wow. We now run our regional chairs meetings once every couple of months, hour and a half, early in the morning, all get together, find out what's going on, what support they need. Again, Hong Kong, Macau, they join us for some of those meetings. It's opened up opportunities, we're having conversations in Australia, we're having conversations in the US around how we can create virtual communities to support members and potential members. So um, whilst it's been a challenge, it's also created huge opportunities that I didn't anticipate on the 1st of August when I stepped through the door. Yeah, it's and now, now reflecting on what you just said, and of course, uh, the CICS is uh, is an international organization having international members and while before there was always the limitations of distance that distance is suddenly just um, it, it just disappeared so uh, you know widening the availability of the CICS for uh, potential members which is really really uh, good now looking into more uh, the, the strategic side of the CICS so as a, as a new CEO what has been your focus uh, for the strategic direction of uh, the institution so this first year has been very much about developing the strategy. And as I said earlier, we've now developed a 30 year strategy and that's all been done through consultation with members. So I'm very aware that whilst I'm the CEO of the organisation, I'm not a member and it's a membership organisation. So I see my role very much there to come up with that, some ideas, but it's for members to decide if they're good ideas, for members to input their ideas, for them to really feel it's their institution. It's definitely not mine, it's, it's members' institution. So we've done an awful lot of work around the strategy. We've got the 30-year strategy agreed by Council of Management and we will have that launched in September. And the last few months we've been looking at how we deliver the first five years of that. So we've developed a five-year plan and we're now having conversations with Council of Management regarding how we might resource that. Because it's great having lots of new ideas, but you have to be able to implement them and deliver them really well. So that's been a big part of the work that I've been doing. But then I suppose by the side of that, and you've already mentioned it, I'm a huge advocate of equality and diversity within the workplace. Well, in life generally, I suppose for the last 35 years, I've 
been very prominent in promoting gender um, and equality around gender, but there's so much more that we need to do, not just gender, you know, you think about ethnicity, you think about all of the protected characteristics. And funnily enough, somebody contacted me the other day to say, had I thought about how we support older members in the institution, because that's one of the protected characteristics. So we've done a lot of with the EDI Council. And again, we have a 20 plan ready to launch later on this year, which will really demonstrate CICES's commitment, genuine commitment to equality, diversity and inclusion. And I think that it could make us a very special institution in the way that we value all members and the way that we start to create multiple pathways into the industry. I'm a big advocate of education. I think education is so important, but we can't assume that everyone's going to come into our sector through a single route. Some people find school great, some don't, some enjoy university, some don't even contemplate it. We need a really broad-based workforce and we need to find ways to bring them into our profession regardless of background. So that's been one of my other big drivers um, because it's just something I'm really passionate about and it will benefit the industry. Again, from a personal experience as a member, it's amazing to see how active the CICS has been. I can certainly see a difference since you joined at the CICS and the, the subjects, the very subjects you just talked about, you know, they, they're really actively coming out and coming through. So I guess as far as a feedback scope, here's one from me that the CICS is, is certainly on the right trajectory and on the right path. You know, being part of some of those strategic sessions, uh, you know, really good setup as well, presentations, whiteboard session, and it was all about inclusivity, as you are saying, you know, it's a member's organization, let's include uh, everyone. Now, and at CAT surveys, we talk a lot about the digital transformation. How do you see the CICS and the construction industry evolving in an ever more digital world? For me, there's no question that the construction industry has to embrace the digital world. And that's around how we use data and big data is fundamental, learning how we do that. And then how we deliver all of our product through that digital information. As an industry, and I've come from a background where I was a client for many, many years in the industry. And when you look at issues around performance, when you look at issues around quality, all of those can really be addressed if we embrace the digital world. So it seems to me to be quite simply a no brainer. It's something that must be done. It's not when it's it's a must. I think it's interesting because we, we ran a couple of workshops around the digital world and what this meant. And what I was trying to get out of that was to understand what were the barriers and which of those barriers could CICES help in and which are the barriers which actually are down to industry. So one of the fundamental barriers are always how you invest and where you invest and what money you have. And, you know, construction is a low margin industry and you've got to be investing in the digital aspects of construction right up front and clients I know are often not very happy to fund that on the early stages of a construction project so you've got those sorts of challenges now I don't think we can solve those as CICES but what I think we can do is to start to do some of the thinking for members so if we can bring thought leadership to how digital may be implemented, bring evidence for yourselves, bring forward white papers, and there's a white paper around BIM being developed at the moment. If we can support members to do the thinking, because members say they don't always have time to think, they're too busy doing, I quite understand that. If we can facilitate that thinking, that will help you and every other member to then go back into the industry and explain why that investment is needed why you need to do things differently, why it's so important. So that for me is where I see CICS's role. And I think that that thought leadership falls into 
a couple of categories. It's thinking about what's happening in the here and now in the short term. And in particular, actually looking outside of construction, looking at other industries which have really embraced the digital world and what we can learn from them and bring that back in. So when if you think about all our commercial managers, when you think about purchasing tools and estimating tools that other industries use, how do we bring that in? Things like chain block, which everybody keeps telling me now is slightly old hat, so okay. But I think it's then also about trying to do the long-term thinking. So we're talking, we have the challenge of net zero 2050. Actually, what are we doing now in terms of the thinking to see what that world will look like and what we have to put in place now. So it's all about thought leadership. It's about us taking a role and a position. And it's about us giving the evidence and the tools to all of you to then take back into your own companies and your own industries and put in front of your own clients to try and change the, the industry and move it forward. And it's not optional. It has to be done. And do you think that the pandemic changed people's thinking and even accelerated digital, digital transformation? Yes, I think it has to. So we, we all use IT now in a way that we were scared of using yeah. a couple of years ago. If you'd have said to me, would I come and sit on a platform and talk to a group of people? I'd have gone, yeah, that's fine, because I was really comfortable in that environment. The first couple of times I did this sort of event, I found it quite challenging because I wasn't getting reaction from an audience, etc. Whereas now it's just something that you do. So I think we've all got very used to it. I think what we need to be careful and make sure we do is that we've gone through a massive change over 18 months. We can't lose that momentum. We have to keep that change going forward. And we shouldn't be thinking about going back to what used to be the normal. We need to think about how's the right way of working, whether it's in the office, on a construction site, whatever, going forward. Yeah. Um, there is so much that computerization can do, that self-driving vehicles can do, so much of the danger of construction sites that can be taken out if we use AI properly and an automated environment. And that's not threatening a workforce in any way, it's actually supporting them so that they work in a really safe environment. Again, as a client, if I put my, client, my old client hat on, my number one priority is always health and safety. And I think that the digital world supports that. But it, it, for me, it just deals with, it covers everything. And I think it's really exciting and interesting. Yeah, yeah, an interesting thing you said that uh, you don't think, or at least you shouldn't go back to normal. And I'm talking to quite a few people in the industry. Anyone I'm talking to, they not telling me, oh, I just can't wait to be back to business as usual or business as normal. I'm so looking forward to get back to business as the new norm, business as new usual, uh, what it may be for uh, different businesses. Now, part of your uh, digital trajectory is the new Knowledge Hub. The CIC has uh, recently launched uh, June uh, this year. Now, just how significant is this launch uh, for the CICS? So I think it's really significant. And what we've launched so far is just the very first stages of it. So if I go back to that passion about people having multiple pathways into the industry, part of that is having access to knowledge in multiple ways. And the Knowledge Hub gives us that opportunity for people to learn technical knowledge, to develop their own careers, to look at their own personal development, to work at a pace that suits them. It's long term, a tool whereby we can reference and store information. So long term aspiration of Steve Slesser, who has always been the sponsor for this project, is that we have all of the backdated journals accessible via the Knowledge Hub. And, you know, there is so much information for people in there. We see it as a way of helping people as they go through careers at all stages, right from People picking up some of the very basics. We want to get sessions on there around measuring, measuring tools. Some of those very basic things, which maybe for a university student has almost missed that stage. Apprentices have learned some of it as they've gone through the trades. But for some of our university students, they just haven't quite got that practical bit. We can bring all that onto it. 
we can help people as they develop through their career and we can start to develop leadership models on there as well. You know, so there is so much that over the next two or three years, it will start to deliver for members. And what I think is really special about CICES is that the Knowledge Hub is not unique. Many institutions run them. Most institutions, though, decide that it's something that they can charge extra for. And I think that's wrong. We have created this. We've used members' money to set up the Knowledge Hub. We will use members' money to continue to develop it and curate it. And therefore, they should have access to it. So I think that is something which is quite special. We, we will have on there eventually links to other things they can go and develop, which may be chargeable, but that's because they're accessing something outside of the institution. But whilst it's information that we control and manage, then the, the principle is that it's free to access for all members. Oh, that's a really, really refreshing to hear. And then flicking through the knowledge shop, it certainly looks really comprehensive. I was wondering, how long did it take from conceptions, from the idea, through the development to get to the finished article? So the original idea was before I joined, say Steve Slesser was the sponsor for it, and it came out of a strategic review about three years ago. Um, so I think Steve had been doing quite a lot of background work on it for about 18 months. And then when I came in, my view was that if we really wanted to get on with this, we needed to go out there and find a provider. So that what we have at the moment has been bought effectively an off the shelf facility, but they're just fantastic. They're a provider who support us, give us real flexibility on what we can do with it. And once we decided we were going to go down that route, then I think it was about three months from signing up to being able to launch but there's just so much more to do and it is really exciting and we will get the edp and m committee very involved so that we've got that oversight to make sure that what goes on there is fully compliant with all our professional standards and we protect that but it's a great facility for members if i understand it right the knowledge club is here to stay and it's only going to get better and better as you're going uh, forward. Now, I can't let you go in before talking a bit about the CICS uh, future. So what are the key focus areas and challenges for the CICS in the coming years? There's all the challenges and, and opportunities coming out of the strategy, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I think the big opportunity and the thing that gets me most excited is the focus on getting members involved. I think people have seen my approach over the last 12 months. And I said at the beginning, it's a members institution. And going forward, we want to create as many opportunities as possible for a whole breadth of members to get involved in what we're doing. So you'll see lots of adverts going out to join committees, to join groups. Um, to sit on different things. If people have a particular interest, area of interest, and they want to do something in that area, they just need to drop me a note and we'll see what we can do. And I think in that context, we also want to broaden the collaboration that we do with other membership institutions. Um, the CENG was set up and launched a couple of years ago through our collaboration with the Engineering Council. Hopefully ENG Tech will come very soon. But we're working with organisations like Construction Industry Council. I've been very involved with them over the last six months as they've developed a new strategy. And there's lots of opportunities for members to really get involved with those groups and influence their industry. That for me is the big thing. Get involved, get the most out of your, your membership by contributing to it. And we'll keep coming out and asking people to. And be brave, just put your name forward. You may not be right for the first thing, but there'll be something else coming along. And in that context, that then brings me right back to delivering the strategy. And we have four themes coming out of the strategy. One is this thought leadership, research-led approach. Secondly, it's about maintaining our professional standing and recognition. So again, I'd encourage anybody listening to this to think about your membership, about your fellow application. Third is around creating this really inclusive environment. And the fourth is about making sure that actually we just keep enough money coming in through the coffers and we spend it wisely. So financial sustainability. And there's so much that's going to be going on on that through all of those areas and through all of that, always thinking about equality and diversity 
about digital and about sustainability. And I want to run those sort of three threads through everything that we do. So at the start of any project, we'll ask those questions. Is this really inclusive? Is it supporting our digital agenda? Are we doing something in a way that is sustainable? Be that continuing with more virtual meetings rather than encouraging everyone to drive through to uh, what materials we use in the office to print and clean, etc. So right across the board. So lots of things to do. It should be exciting. And I'll just say it one final time, just get involved, please. To me, that's the perfect message uh, you could give and, um, and absolutely agree as an existing member and uh, an experience. Uh, and I certainly cannot wait to see the CICS evolving and uh, thriving and more importantly, be part of that journey. So uh, absolutely uh, get involved because if, if you be part of something, you know, your words going to be listened to. And CICS is one of those organizations where you are being listened to. You've got the opportunity to, to, to make the difference, which is really, really key. And thank you so much uh, for uh, being here and uh, sharing your uh, wisdom. I really enjoyed the discussion with you today and I hope uh, you did it uh, too. I did. It's been great. And it's great having an opportunity just to share some of the thoughts and some of the things that are going on at the institution because it's exciting times. And thank you so much again. And uh, see you later. Thank you. Thank you.